Well, are you in the mood for a very spring-like tree tutorial? I have a lovely birch tree one for you today. You can draw as many birch trees as you like and different ways. I'm just showing you the ones I drew uh, and how I paint the whole background and the scene. Make it really simple. Um, you can add whatever you want. I talk about adding flowers and stuff like that, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, Patreon members get the trace that goes with this, but you guys can draw your own trees. It's just simple birch trees that kind of come together like this. You can do four or five more or less than I have, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just showing you how I go about painting this whole scene in between. And if, like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you get the traceable and the extended part of this video. And if you want to join Patreon, click the link in the description box below. But without further ado, let's get painting spring birch trees. All right, so I have my lovely drawn out trees here. You can just draw some simple trees kind of going down, maybe one, two, a little third one skinny in the back, two on the right, and then you can mask them if you want, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use my Princeton 12 Neptune series. I'm gonna paint like a light wash sky. I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue deep, maybe a little burnt sienna. Mix the two. And then I'm just like, Hold my paper. This is a block from Fabriano. This is a seven by nine. And I'm just gonna put some of that color in between the trees. If I get it in the tree, no big deal. I can remove some of that. Or you wanna mask in the tree, it's up to you. I'm just gonna do like a light wash of the sky in between some of these trees. Going across. going in between the trees. I'm not going to worry too much about the ones up here that I've gone over with blue because I'm going to add some green leaves. Just bring this color down a little bit. Now, if you really want to just remove the color off the tree real quick, you can take a paper towel and kind of lift it that I just did. Right. I don't mind it because I might add some gray to the tree anyway. And boom, just have a light wash going across. Nice little light wash and go in between them. Simple blue color. Okay. Um, you can let that dry or you can start to play with adding in greens around that lovely tree. And I always mix my greens. I feel like they look a little more natural. So Cabin Yellow Deep, I always use. I grab some Prussian Blue. Now the painting consistency, the consistency is like how the paint moves right now with the water, because watercolor obviously used water with the tube paints. I always use tube paints because you can mix up more paint. So right now it's like a cream consistency. Think of like actual cream, coffee, tea. If you want tea, you're gonna add way more water. See like that? It's very tea consistency. And we had cream before that. So when I mentioned tea, coffee, milk, cream, butter, butter is basically right out of the tube. I'm gonna add a little more yellow, get some bright, bright chartreuse type cream. And we can start to play with putting in these colors, these lovely little greens, just light color here in between the trees. Leaving the white. You want to paint around the tree. This is if you don't have masking fluid. If you do, well then mask the trees. Make your life a lot easier. I don't mind if I went over that one either. So I'm just taking a nice, like I said, bright chartreuse green going in between my two trees. I mean two trees, my many trees. <laughs> just with this color, leaving the white of the tree. This is just really loose. Just get it all down in there. Can even bring it all the way down to the ground. Now we can start to play with making some dry brush marks down here. What is dry brush? Like where the paint doesn't really fill in all the crevices of this cold press. 
see I'm kind of just moving my paintbrush like this, getting some nice dry brush marks. Now here it's kind of going on a straight line. We're going to play around with putting it up here, some background trees. We don't want it in a straight line. Just kind of putting in little trees back here, the foliage. Taking the green, I'm just taking my brush and kind of tapping a little foliage here. Same thing up in here. So it's not just this line that's going across. You want some, you know, you want the whole line. You want to go up and down a little bit, even go up here a little bit. Some variety, you wouldn't have that nature that's like a line going across. Just kind of filling in this. You can even just do some little taps so there's like leaves you see kind of floating in the background there. And this is still very, no, pretty dry. At this point you can start to play with adding in a little bit of this color too. Just tapping in some of this green around your lovely trees up here. Now you can kind of mush it and then add a few little taps like this. See how kind of you're basically going around the tree and then doing some taps. Right? Gonna add a little bit more yellow. Do some really kind of small ones back here. Faint in the little branch that we see. And here. Really just kind of like playing around with the brush. I like to use a number 12. It's a very floppy and loose brush. It's perfect for lending itself to something like this. You just don't have to be every little teeny little leaf. You can just kind of mush some of it and then tap a little bit. And you get that nice look. Just little taps go a long way. <laughs> now we can get this even darker, like we have some evergreen back here. I'm just playing around with the color tones. This green was so much water. Remember we had talked about consistency. I don't want it so wet like that. I'm going to go back in and get some thicker paint. It's more of a medium tone, right? We can play around with adding some of that back here over our light tone in between our tree. So you use the tip to kind of go outline around the tree and kind of wiggle your brush. See, now we're seeing the trees come to life with some medium green color. Now don't go all the way to the top. Kind of go down here. You want different, like, you want the background light green. You want this medium green. We're playing around with the different tones. And while this one is damp, we can add some even deeper green. So again, the medium green, like a nice bright, almost like a Kelly green. You can kind of come down here. We can get even darker if you want to have more of a forest or more of a, a country meadow. So this would be more like a meadow. If we get really dark, we can have like a more of a forest kind of look to it. Still keeping the foreground kind of light at this point. Taking that medium green, going in here, putting in another layer. See, watercolors don't have to look super realistic and just tap, 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 and leaves again. Now this medium green, we can start to tap some of that color up in here. Play around with that. Getting a little bit darker still. Tapping. Multicolored leaves. They would probably be a lot darker kind of going towards the tree. We'll get even darker still with another color, but it's nice to have some bright medium green. And just kind of go mush it against the tree here. So now it's highlighted, like a negative painting in a way. Tippy tapping. 
Look at that. Lovely. You could do the same thing over here if we wanted to have more tippy tap leaves or you want to keep it like maybe a forest. It's up to you. Uh, I might keep it this way like we have over here on the left. Maybe I'll do the same other thing. I was going to add some darker trees, but I decided not to. I'll do the tippy tap. Get some bright yellow up there. Change up the color a little bit. Like a nice springy kind of summery day. And tippy tap tap tap. All right, we're going to play around with these colors too. So get that medium green. I always like to kind of maybe turn my paper like this. And then we're going to go like this, leaving, leaving some of that light green. So showing through. See how that works? It's easier to hold it like this on the side. Just kind of mush it out. Still leaving some of that green. And we can start to play with putting some grasses with that medium green. Really kind of quick. All right. And now you just build up with some simple dark color. So I'll grab Prussian blue. Now that's already like a very blue blue and a little bit of yellow. And then I add some burnt umber. You get a super dark green. If these are still wet back here, and not you can kind of play with it. You can go back in here and make really deep dark green trees. More like an evergreen. So you can kind of do like a point on some of the little branches kind of sticking out. And come down here. Fill that in. So now that tree really kind of stands out. Do some more points up here. Like a big evergreen. Let me do a few in here. Kind of move this paint around and maybe just have like a kind of just like a green dark tree kind of happening. You can tap around this. Look at that. This really comes to life, right? Because you got the dimension in the background. And we can kind of play with adding some of that too here. It's a little bit damp, which is great. We can kind of play with that. Adding in some dark foliage. This doesn't have to be an evergreen. You could put it like a little evergreen here. So it's a line down and like these little, almost like V's off the tree. See, V's, and then just kind of mush it. And you have your evergreen. So now we have all this depth. Voila. And again, tap in the paper towel, do some like dry brushing going across. With this color. Going across, you can use it again here. But I would wait for the, the greens down here after you filled in your tree, right? You can play around with some of this though. I'll just make it simple greens. Tip tap. You can add some browns, etc. All right, so we've played with the green. Now we're going to go into the trees. And you can take some of this dark green here too. Kind of play with tapping some of that up and around here for some more depth. In your trees, kind of back here. That's kind of surrounding the tree itself. Just some nice tippy taps. You, you want to leave some space though. Do it all. Tons of green. A little bit of that. Look at that. All right. And you can take a little bit of this dark green again. Like I said, do a little lines gonna go across, little bumps. So it just looks like some dark greenish colors back here, going across, 
have some nice variety. We'll put in some, maybe some blues too. It's all our lovely greens we're playing with. Now we're the forest. Maybe it looks a little too liney at that one. I don't know. I'm going to water it down just a little bit. Add some more green and some burnt sienna. It changes the green color, more olive. I'm going to go across here. Fill that in. This olivey kind of green. All right, I'm going to let this dry. Start working on the trees. So for the trees, really simply, you can make a gray. I'm using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I might just have burnt sienna by itself too. So you're gonna play around with some grays and some browns, right? Get them mixed up. Because we don't want the tree to be so white. And you can have the kind of grays kind of watered down and lightly on this right side, kind of going down inside here. You don't want it super white. See, I'm adding more gray right on that side. And you can go in and grab some of this burnt sienna, even thick, tap a little bit. So it looks kind of, see how it's bleeding? It's a little bit rusty. And grab a thick, mix these two and it's almost like black, right? So you can mix that, kind of go across, make these little lines. Look at that. Really kind of quick. Again, the gray, a little bit more deeper if you wanted to have it come deeper up here. Depends on how you want to do the branch. I would do a little bit darker, kind of with the one that's behind this tree. If you put one behind a tree and it's kind of going down here in the bottom, it's going to be much darker. Adding some more gray gray. Grays up here on the one side. Highlight. And grab your thicker paint and kind of blend and bleed going across. See, little lines. You don't want to line, 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 line. You don't want to do that. I'm going to tap a little bit here and there and go across. I'm going to in the two to get that grayish black color. You don't want really black, black. You just don't. It just looks kind of off putting. Browns, burnt sienna. Looks nice. Look how pretty that looks. And you can actually kind of put some more browns in here if you want to do that. Change it up a little bit. See how I did that? Again, you can make, put some more browns up in this tree. Up here, make it a little darker. And we're going to do the same thing with these ones. Putting in the dark color. Oops, that went in my sky. I'm just going to move this real quick. So again, just putting the dark color on the one. I'm just putting it on the right side. I don't like to put it on all over the place and put the darker color kind of on the bottom. And then you take the thicker paint, almost like butter, mix the two, and you do your little lines. And if you want to just grab some burnt sienna itself, kind of bleed that and go across. And you have your lovely trees. A little bit darker down here. All that good stuff. You see that? And do the same thing to the ones in the back. And if there's ones behind this tree, if you put one behind, you want to get a little bit darker here behind the tree, etc. And like I said, you're just bleeding in the dark little knots. Make them interesting. Put a few dark ones here and there, going across, up and down, etc. And then you have this little teeny branch in the back. Just gonna put a more of a darker color up going up that way. All right? And then for the branches, same two colors, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, kind of thick. And we're just gonna put the little branches off. Now you could use just this, I'm using a number 10 Neptune, oh, excuse me, Velvet Touch series brush. You could use a liner brush. It's up to you. I'm just gonna make these really kind of quick branches coming off the trees. You can play around with this where you want your branches to come off. So once you've painted your trees, you can just take your greens again, 
take this brush or any kind of brush and just kind of make some nice little grasses um, whatever you want to do just kind of like up and over kind of all over the place you know even add some browns I wouldn't just do all greens add some brown twin twigs kind of happening and again if this brush is too big I might recommend a liner brush I use a Princeton Umbria number four and it makes great little perfect no that one was too thick but you can get really kind of skinnier ones kind of happening if you want more like nice brown or even like green grasses going over and you can put more of a twig happening up here and add some foliage on that so I got a nice dark again with the two colors blue and brown sienna I can put it in twigs kind of going this way and that way grasses uh, take the same browns whatever colors we have here we have a little bit of burnt sienna play around with adding a little bit dry brush so you can add some flowers in front of the foliage I'm going to tap some just right out of the tube the yellow kind of around these branches down here in the ground a little bit do some tippy taps put some little bit yellow in the way in the background here so it doesn't look strange and then over here too you can see the bright yellow flowers you want to make more of a cluster go right ahead just gonna tap and there you go and that's your beautiful spring birch oops spring birch you can get more detailed you know playing around with the shadows of the trees but that's your basic uh, tutorial I don't want to fuss too much with these trees you want to kind of keep it simple so I hope you enjoyed it and add more flowers you can make it more watercolor flower I mean wildflowers at blues purples pinks whatever uh, have fun with it so I hope you enjoy this if you enjoy my tutorials here on YouTube maybe consider joining my patreon we've extended part of the videos uh, exclusive tutorials and Facebook group and all this good stuff and this video I'm extending a little bit for the patreon so you can click the link in the description box and join patreon you can join and cancel anytime and it's a place where people support my free content on YouTube which I really appreciate so take care happy painting